Hey, I'm Andrew Murray from the Irish Film Festival. I'm delighted to be joined tonight by Kieran O'Mwaney, director of Steve Cooney, Shea Malayak. Kieran, lovely to meet you tonight. To fault you more, Rolf Kigan Austral. How are you doing? How how are you how are you how are you going? How's the weather in in Donegal? Is it still cold up here in Donegal? It's not too bad actually. It's uh, it's nice and sunny here. It's pretty chilly though. It's about eight or nine degrees Celsius. So uh, uh, that it wouldn't be to <laughs> be warmer. I'd say it's the coldest part of Australia. The coldest day. It's a wee bit colder than that. <laughs> Grand, yeah, no, it's about 21 degrees now, not too bad. It's a nice spring day here, but uh, your background looks like you're up in Norway or somewhere. More exotic than, than Guido. Yeah, they come as far south as Donegal now, the, the Northern Lights. We get, it, we get a blast of them every now and again. Lovely. Hey, so tell us about um, the Steve Cooney program. Um, uh, I love the program. Uh, tell us, a, tell us a bit about how it kicked off, how it started off. Well, um, the series that uh, I, I'm the director of at the moment is called Shame Alech, and it's it's a series uh, of musical heroes. So we kind of do a, a, a each pro program is an hour long profile of uh, uh, an Irish music tradition, usually traditional folk music hero. And uh, in this case, we, we, we made a, we, we were lucky enough to get uh, to do a feature on uh, on Steve on Steve Cooney. And uh, Steve, as you know, is a is a musical genius and uh, a mind of knowledge. And uh, uh, he's one of my heroes. I, I've known him since I was about ten years old. Uh, so very lucky to get to to know such a a, 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 a musical person. Uh, but anyway, we. we we went out and we did this hour long program with with um with Steve and we uh usually we covered their whole musical life uh, in Steve's case we had so much material in the can but we only had a 50 minute tv slot so it we had to cut an awful lot down but um just covering his musical life i suppose we focused because it's for our, it, it was made for the irish language broadcaster tg car or tg4 here in Ireland, and uh, uh, the focus would be from an Irish point of view. So we focused on on that element of, of Steve's musical being. He had a, he had a musical life up till the age of thirty out in Australia and early eighties, I believe. Was is it Red Gum? That's right, Red Gum. Yes, uh, that that was the band. For one, um, uh, and he he played with a load of load of the great American musicians as they came through Australia. They, they used to pick up session musicians and Steve was top of the list there. So he was a well-regarded music, musician in Australia before he ever left, uh, playing guitars, bass guitar. Bass guitar, I think, was his big thing. Uh, but he also played didgeridoo and uh, guitars. And then he came to Ireland. And I suppose Steve's big thing in Ireland is that he revolutionised uh, the accompaniment of Irish traditional music. Uh, I don't think... There, there are very few people who've come into the music uh, and who have taken, gone inside the music and uh, created their own sound. And Steve has done that. And when it comes to the backing of uh, traditional tune types like polkas and slides, Steve has created the template that is the backing for them now. And he has uh, he has really taken on Irish channel singing or old style singing. Uh, Steve is is one of the best at backing that, and he's created a a, a backing that is amazing. And uh, he's backed some of the best in Ireland: Seamus Begley, Yearlow Leonard, Martin Hayes, and many, many more. Do you, Do you want to tell us a little bit about um, Steve's early years in uh, Ireland? Um, came to Ireland, I just wrote down a, a wee note here because I think it's, it's pretty uh, important. Steve went to learn um, the didgeridoo. Um, he learned the didgeridoo from David Balanasi, who'd be David Bulpalil's uh, 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 uncle. And uh, Balanasi sent him up to the Northern Territories to learn uh, the didgeridoo from the Aborigines. And uh, after uh, spending a bit of time with uh, uh, a tribe up there. Um, one of the, 
Aborigines named Leo told him, uh, how do you expect to learn our culture when you don't even know your own? And he was sent to find out his Irish heritage and he was told to learn five things. So the five things were language, music, dancing, poetry and magic. So here you have a man who spent years, a few years with the Aborigines and after a few years he was told he had to go back and figure out his own ancestry and his own background. And he uh, he went went to Ireland and became immersed in it. And Steve is great Irish now, uh, but he's also uh, just the, the way he's got himself inside Irish traditional music is um, it's beyond belief that he had a whole other musical life be before that up to the age of thirty. And, and Steve played with. Um... Uh, Stockton's Wing and uh, played with a, a, a couple of other bands for a little while, not long after coming to Ireland. I believe so. Yeah, he he, he started off. He he got a job. He 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 depped with. He started playing uh, the didgeridoo around Dublin, <laughs> jamming in in a few sessions, and he and he quickly got picked up by Stockton's Wing, and uh, uh, he ended up then touring with them for a few years. And Stockton's Wing were were. Uh, a big band in Ireland, uh, kind of crossing over between traditional folk and a bit into rock in the in the early uh, to mid eighties. And uh, uh, Steve toured with them, and I think uh, one of one of his um, he he still does the odd gig with them. But but one of when he was touring with them, one of the last gigs of a tour was down in Dingle, and uh, he ended up staying uh, for the weekend, and he ended up. Uh, having a few sessions with uh, the Begley's, uh, with Brendan Begley one night and then the second night, Seamus Begley. And that's, uh, that musical meeting, I think, uh, ended up changing Steve's uh, direction in life. He ended up staying in, uh, in Dingle, uh, in the Dingle Peninsula. He ended up living with uh, Seamus for a while and then he got a caravan and lived up on the edge of a cliff. Um, he said, "If if the there are bad storms down there," and he said, "If if the if the caravan had rolled over four or five times, he'd have been off the edge of the cliff." So he was uh, up there, and uh, the locals knew him as the lowest star on rail to Sichle, because his light was the lowest star in the sky. He was so far up on the mountain, um, but uh, he he was he was based there for. Uh, over 10 years and uh, it's there that people would associate with him musically. Um, I think that's his main musical output in Ireland himself and Seamus Begley. They, they, they were the warm-up act for the Water Boys when the Water Boys were at their height and uh, they, they, toured, they toured all over Ireland and Europe with them and uh, uh, they opened they opened at Glastonbury for the month when the Water Boys played on the main stage at Glastonbury, uh, and uh, they 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 got very well known in Ireland, and it was basically like tr turning traditional music into a disco. The place would be hopping. Yep. The energy. I think you you experienced them yourself, Enda. Yeah, well, I I've been down uh, um, West Kerry at a, a you know at a, uh, at a session and a, and a pub session, and I loved the way it went from from uh, the music could go from show band to to jigs to reels to polkas and back again, and people people dancing around. And and you said you told me earlier that there's a possibility um, that Cooney and Begley are going to um, be, be be playing together again. As it happens, uh, we have a new episode in the series Shema Lake. We, we have a new series ready to go on TG Car, uh, TG4, um, and uh, it start, the, the new series starts this Sunday with Paddy Keenan of the Bothy Band, but the second episode in the series is Seamus Begley, and uh, we have a whole section in that programme of, uh, of Steve and Seamus actually sitting up on the edge of the cliff playing music and singing songs and uh, reminiscing on old times uh but Fantastic. it's great that, yeah they're back together because th there was a rift there or a, um maybe not a rift but uh they, they, they didn't play <laughs> together for a long time but it's it's great to um to bring them back together and for people to get to see that energy happening once more yeah i the cool of and son clara to the gaelic affair flew shocking steve coney and ish all right well 
Ta dolum shangelic. Um, Steve did as his ancestor, or as the as the Aborigines told him. They said, "Go home, go home, and learn your own uh, language, music, dancing, poetry, and magic." And he definitely learned the language. He learned the music. He got inside the dancing. He knows the poetry, and I think he's got the magic too. I think he 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 got the whole suite. Uh, when he came here to Ireland, he really he really delved himself into Irish culture. And there's not many Irish people who could uh, take on Steve in a, on a tete-a-tete on what it is to be Irish or Irish culture now, because Steve, re- he really, really got himself in there. I was very impressed. Um, his, his last album, guitar album, he's playing harp tunes. And there's a great uh, history of harp in, in, in Ireland going, going back um, to, to seven, uh, 1795 and the, the harp convention in Belfast. And I like that, uh, the history associated with it. So it's, it's great that Steve's, he, he, so he's playing harp tunes on the guitar. Yeah, I mean, I mean Steve is so versatile as a musician um, and he brought out a, a gorgeous uh, album there called Arsa Clarshi and I think the only way you can get it is uh, to actually find Steve's website on the web and order it from him directly. Um, Steve has uh, but he, he's he's basically playing harp music on a on on the guitar and I don't know anybody who can do it as well as Steve does uh, and he's just so musical uh, it's it's a gorgeous music. It's a gorgeous CD. I actually have it on my CD player at home. I like to cook dinner to it. It's a nice chill out CD. And uh, I was chatting to him uh, a few weeks ago, and he's just uh, he's just got a brand new album ready to go, which is the complete opposite of that. And it's a uh, uh, pretty funked up music, I believe. I'm looking forward to hearing it. Uh, he's got a 14 piece band backing him on it, so uh, he's he's he's. Really, I think get, gaining confidence to to show his output. Um, I mean, he's it, it's taken him a lot. Where Steve is brilliant, and I think we a lot of us in Ireland recognise he's brilliant. I think his own self confidence sometimes. Sometimes he, he he. I think it's only now that he's realising um, that he he has this ability and he his output for music now hopefully will will um, will get greater and greater uh, with the harp music CD and now his new CD, which I believe will be called A Nini. And uh, I, again, I presume that those CDs will be available from his own website. Uh, so for us to get to cover him on that uh, program, Shame of Lake, uh, Musical Heroes, it's usually a legacy program, but I think we only might have caught the first half. I think the second half of Steve is just about starting and ready to go and um, uh, I'd say anybody who's interested in Steve's music uh, get onto his website and watch this space because there's plenty there's plenty of music ready to go. Fantastic um, I uh, really enjoyed the scene uh, where he plays with Dolly Parton in Paddy O'Shea's in Dingle. I think they talk about that still Oh, the, sure. The the time Dolly came to Dingle, well, like she she was when she was, well, she still is. But uh, I suppose the late eighties, Dolly Parton was the star, and uh, she arrived into the pub, and uh, she had no intention of singing, and Steve approached her and uh, said, "I know your song, um, Coat of Many Colors," and uh, he did, and they they. They did a rendition of it in the live pub, and as you can see in the program, it's 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 great music, but it's also it's great crack. That you, you can see the Ireland in its heyday and the place hopping, and uh, Steve's right in the centre. That Steve dry, and that's the magic of Steve. He drives the energy, and uh, he walks into a room and he grabs the energy, and he people people just I think. Uh, he, he he makes people really go to the like really enjoy themselves. You want to have a great night out, and you find out Steve's in the locality. You're going to have a great night. There was um, a couple of things I was thinking about when watching the film, which and one of them was was um, the Gaelic and and the, the Irish language, and um, just from from someone who works within Irish language. 
um, like for, for our audience here, many of whom are out of, out of Ireland for um, many years, and people asking what's the state of the, the language at the moment. So, um, it's, it's, it's in a great place, I think. Um, I mean, uh, people would normally associate Gaeltacht areas like where I live. Uh, in, I live in Gidor in northwest Donegal, and there are a few touchstone Gaeltarts down the west coast here in Gidor, in Connemara, in West Galway, uh, in West Cork, in uh, the Dingle Peninsula, in West Kerry, and there's a couple inland as well. Uh, but they're the main Gaeltart areas, uh, and they're pretty small, but the Irish language itself is now flourishing in cities such as Dublin and Belfast, Cork, Limerick. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's moving. Uh, it may be diminishing slightly in the Gaeltarts, but it's, it's definitely growing on a nationwide level. And I think that's, that's the great thing. Irish language is a bit like Irish culture. It's not something you can stick in a box um, and look at in a historical way. Uh, it's really alive and thriving and if you want to get involved in it there it's it's worldwide now with with the web and uh, there's an awful lot of people learning it uh i forget the name of that app that uh, people learn languages online but it's it's there's two and a half million people learning irish on that and there's there's lo it's it's a big um it's a, it's a thri it's actually thriving and uh, it's, it's great to see and hopefully uh, like there were people fearing for it back years ago but I suppose you still have to work at it but um, it's, it's great and it's thriving and uh, the culture, uh, Irish culture is, is thriving and it's diversifying and living in the new life that we're, we're in technologically these days. Great. Um the, the other question was, uh, how is the Irish music, the live scene, uh, going with uh, COVID? Well, uh, there is no live scene uh, with COVID at the moment. We're in a what we're we're in a the whole island is in a stage five lockdown. So uh, stage five is the is the max. So people basically were only allowed to do essential work, and other than that. Uh, you're not allowed to mix in people's houses. You're not even allowed to go from house to house. So it's um, it's pretty. Uh, the music scene has gone online. Uh, most musicians aren't getting to gig. Um, they're all diversifying. Musicians are very good at finding niches and ways to make things work. Uh, in this case, I think they're going to have to do something for the next couple of years because it's it's going to be hard to. Irish musician, Irish musicians to make a living need to travel. Uh, it's very hard to make a living just solely in Ireland, and uh, uh, that's very that's impossible at the moment. So um, it's the the live scene. I suppose we're, we're everybody's kind of waiting, uh, waiting for all this to be over, and uh, hopefully, uh, if not next twenty twenty one, hopefully in twenty twenty two, things will start kicking back into gear. Because uh, when when people will be allowed to go out and party again, there's going to be a very big one here in Ireland. <laughs> yeah, so we've been very lucky over here um, with 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 uh, with COVID. Uh, bad as it has been, it hasn't been as bad as as, as um, other other places. So um, we we have been uh, lucky uh, to escape. Um, I was I was going to say. Um, did, did you want to say hello to any any uh, 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 friends or relatives over here? Well, I actually don't think I have any any relatives in Australia. But we we did tour there. Uh, we did tour there. Uh, I think it's about three or four years ago. Myself and my wife Kathleen and uh, Kahalo Curran, and uh, we we have a band called the High Seas. Uh, we weren't. We were together as a trio when we played at the National Folk Festival there, uh, I think it's 2016 or 2017. Uh, and we, we, we had a whale of a time, we had a great time. And we also toured in New Zealand while we were over there as well. And we, we, had, a, we had an absolutely magic time. Um, it's, it's a country I'd love to go to and, and, and uh, spend a lot more time. We actually went to a match there, um, uh, uh, St Kilda versus Geelong uh, down in the, down in Melbourne, and it was it was just great to see. Um, I think it was Zach too. He was uh, was tearing it up over there at the time, and he's um, 
I, I, I'd love to get to, to back to Australia to play more music and get to see a bit more of the country. Yeah, absolutely. We're missing the, the festival season um, around the new year. Uh, Don O'Connor, who's the, the producer of, of um, Shema Leak, I, I saw perform in, at, at, at the, uh, the National Folk Festival. Time's catching up with us, Kieran. So, um, uh, we've got to go. It's lovely to talk to you and um, best of luck with the, the new series of, of Shema Leak. Cool. Thanks for chatting, Nanda, and best luck with the rest of the festival. Gorimila Maigat Slanagan's Bannock. Walter Rhodes.